Alrighty then, my game dev gangsters, let us now create the saw because we also have the saw obstacle if you remember from the previous video. So we are going to go here in the sprites and the obstacles and there you go. So we have also the spikes over here and we also have the saw. And what I'm going to do is take the saw and put it over here and I am going to put that on the enemy layer. And of course, we're going to resize the saw. So 0.3 and 0.3 i think this is a fair amount of size amount of size is now a word put it in the dictionary <laughs> anyways we are going to attach a circle collider because that is appropriate for the saw we, are, we cannot attach a you know a cube or a box on a circle there you go and i am going to resize it just a little bit something like this can do maybe just a little bit more there you go this is what I'm going to use. And of course, I'm going to tag it with the enemy tag. I don't want to create a separate tag called obstacle because at the end of the day, any one of these obstacles, be that an enemy or a saw or a spike, whatever touches the player, it will simply make the player die. That's all there is to it. Now, what I want to do with the saw is I want to make it move between two points like this. And in order to do that, I need to first create a parent game object. I'm going to call this one Solve Holder. And again, don't be afraid. This is not John Kramer. This is not the movie Saw. It's not going to kidnap you or whatnot. You no, know, it's not going to do anything. So there you go. So Solve over here. And for this one, I am going to set it 0, 0, 0. Because, you know, we need to have the Saw at the position where its parent is. There you go. And now we also need to add the holder or actually the two ways where the saw is going to move. So I'm going to create one and this is going to be move point one and duplicate it. And this is going to be move point, so duplicate it again because I deleted it, move point two. For both of these, I am going to tag them with, you know, the orange tag so that we know where they are. And if I put one over here, so let's say at minus four, and I put another one at four, we're going to make the solve move between these two, between these two points. Now, in order to do that, we do need to go over here inside of our script and the enemy scripts, or actually I'm going to create the obstacle scripts folder. So over here, I'm going to say obstacle scripts. There we go. And from here, I'm going to right click and create the saw. Simple as that. I don't know. I th don't think this can get any simpler. And we are going to attach it on the saw itself. So this one, the game object holding the sprite, we're not going to attach it on the saw parent because of obvious reasons. You don't want to tell your parents anything. So the saw doesn't want to tell its parent anything. So I'm going to do my thing and all of good stuff. I forgot to sync to you. That's my money lost. So what do we need? Well, first things first, we need over here a private transform and one is going to be move point underscore one and the second one is going to be move point underscore two. There you go. Next, we need the move speed. So this is also going to be a serialized field, private float, move speed. By default, I'm going to set that to be equal to 5F. And then we also need a private transform. And this is going to be a target position because we need to know on which out of these two points are we going to move? So are we going to move to point one or point two or so on and so forth? So we need the target position. And over here, I'm going to say private bull, first move point. So basically, this is the move point where it's going to determine which is going to be the first move point or the move point where we are going to move. Simple as that. Next, we also need a variable for the rotation because we are going to rotate our, we're going to rotate the saw. So over here, we're going to create a serialized field like that. And this is going to be a private float rotation speed. And that's going to be equal to 200 by default. And it's not flat, it's float. There you go. And last two variables are going to be the angle and the temporary rotation. So over here, we're going to have a private vector three temp rotation and I'm going to set that to be vector 3.0 because initial value is the zero one. We don't care. After that, we're going to create the new values over here, private float, Z angle. And that's all there is to it. So inside of the awake, we're going to randomize the movement being 
is the sub going to move to point one or point two? And in order to do that, we are going to say here, if our random range between zero and two, if that value is greater than zero, so there's a 50-50 chance, and over here we're going to say else, so 50-50 chance for one of the scenarios to happen. So over here, if it is greater than zero, we're going to say first move point is equal to false. Then I'm going to say target position is equal to move point two, because we're not moving to the first move point. And then we're going to also say rotation speed multiplied equals two by minus one, because we also want to randomize the rotation speed if we are going to rotate the saw backwards or forwards, basically this is what we are doing. Else, if this is not true, so if random range between zero and two is not greater than zero, then our first move point is going to be equal to true and the target position is going to be equal to move point one because, well, we should move to the first move point. So now inside of the update, we're going to call a function handle movement. We not handle, not human pose, handle movement, movement. There you go. We still didn't create this function. So over here, void, handle movement, and now we don't have any issues. So what's going to happen here is that we are going to use vector three move towards. So I'm going to say transform position is equal to vector three dot move towards, and it's going to move from this position. So transform that position towards the target position in the move speed multiplied with time dot delta time timely manner. So what the hell is this teacher? I don't understand. I'm, I'm going to beat you up. Don't just, you know, don't No. If you beat me up, you'll end up in jail. You cannot learn anymore. Just calm down. I'm going to explain. What if I tell you that I have more tutorials with better explanations and a more comprehensive guide to game development than this one that you're following? Sounds interesting? Well, that's my Game Development Academy. And inside, I have more than 80 courses and more than 500 hours of content for you to learn Unity game development, Unreal Engine game development, and everything in between. Click the link below and check it out. So essentially what's happening here, our vector three move towards is going to move this value, basically this, from this position towards this position in this timely manner. So this is the simplest way how I can explain this. So it can move from this position. Imagine that the transform that position. So let us imagine that this is a point over here and the target position is a point over here. So this function is going to move me from here to here in this timely manner. That's all there is to it. But of course there are, you know, we need to test it out inter or actually we need to test if we have reached the target destination, because we can run this right now, but it will just take us to one point. It will just take us to one point, and let me just attach the transform. So there you go, one and two. And if I hit the play button, it will just take me to one of these. There you go. And it reached that one, and that's all there is to it. And I'm going to remove the spider jumper because he's crazy. So you see, we do need to check if we have reached that destination in order to move to the second one. So over here, I'm going to use if vector three dot distance between the transform dot position and the target position dot position. If that value is less than 0.1 f, then what we are going to do? And basically what this function will do is it will calculate the distance between this position and this position, and it will return a float. And if that returned float has a value that is less than 0.1, that means we are where we are. I have issues talking. Some of you guys who hold talking classes, I need to attend that. So if that value gets to the point that is less than 0.1, then we are very close to our target and we can simply move. We don't, we don't need to wait until we are exactly where the target is. So 0 0.1 is very close. Basically, this is our target and this is where we are. So we are at the target. There we go. So if that is the case, then over here, we're going to say if first move point, meaning we are moving towards the first move point. So now we're going to say first move point is false and the new target position is equal to move point two. Else, if that is not true, meaning we were moving to the second move point. So we need to simply take this over here and copy and paste it. And now we are going to say true. And over here, we're going to say one, and that's all there is 
to it. So we are essentially, we are using the first move point bool variable that we have declared over here to determine where we are going to move to move point one or move point two. Now we can test this out and we can see that our sob is going to move from one point to another point. So hitting the play button, come on sob, there you go. So it's moving from one point to another point. And of course this depends when where you set these points. So I can set this point for example over here and look at that. So now it's moving towards the point over here. I can set it over here. Look at that. So it's moving towards the point over there. And again, if I set the point over here, you see, and this is how it look like, looks like in the game. What is left for us to do is to rotate our, well, to rotate the saw. So over here, we're going to say void handle rotation. And because the saw, and let me just do this before I forget. So over here, because the saw is a child of the saw holder, we cannot use transform that rotation because the rotation of the saw is depending or is connected. It's relative to the parent game object. And what a lot of people will do, and you will see that in tutorials, they will try to use transform that local rotation or local ELR angles and so on and so forth. That can work, but it's a little bit complicated. I don't know why I tried it out. You can try that out on your own, but essentially what I did is I used the Z angle and I'm setting that value to be equal to time dot delta time. And over here, I'm going to multiply that. So multiply it with the rotation speed. And of course, over here, Z angle is plus equals to. And from here, I am simply going to say temp rotation dot Z is going to be equal to Z angle and over here transform dot rotate and it's not rotate around but rotate and over here I'm simply going to pass the temp rotation. So simply passing the temp rotation and notice I am adding to the Z angle time dot delta time multiplied with the rotation speed. And over here, temp.z angle, because the z angle is the one that we are going to rotate. Let me just go back over here and show you that. So if I click on the solve and over here, the z angle, you see, the z angle is the one rotating. And we don't want to rotate it like this because it looks, you know, crazy. And we're not going to rotate it like this because it also looks crazy. And we're going to rotate on the z. And over here, rotate function applies the rotation of eel anger z degrees around the z axis, as you can see over here. Euler x degrees around x axis and Euler y degrees around the y axis in that order. The order is not important for us because we only use the z and let us test it out. So if I go back over here inside of the editor and if I hit the play button, let's see, look at that. You see, look at how the, the saw is rotating. Of course, we can set a lower value. So we can say, for example, that the z rotation speed is 100 or maybe we can set it to, I don't know, 50. So let's try it out. I'm going to set it over here to 100 because you saw the saw, it's rotating like crazy. We don't want that. You don't want a crazy saw. There you go. It's still rotating a little bit fast. So over here, I don't know, let's try 10. Because as I said, I don't want, okay. It is rotating a little bit slower and look at that. It's rotating really cool and really, really crazy. Let me try out this. So I'm going to leave it at 200, but instead of, you know, doing it like this, Z angle, instead of plus equals, I'm going to say simply equals just to test it, just to test it out to see what is happening. I don't know what's up with me in this video. Okay. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. Very, very nice. So I believe this can be left like this. We can say it's equal. We don't have to add to it. And there you go. It is rotating and it looks cool. So for this, we are going to go here inside of the prefabs and I'm going to right click and create a new prefabs folder and I'm going to call it obstacle prefabs, obstacle prefabs. There you go. And here I'm simply going to drag and drop the solve holder. Voila, that's all there is to it. Now, if something is not clear when it comes to the code that we wrote over here, but basically, you know, we explain everything, but just make sure you ask down below and I will try to help you out at my best. And uh, peace out, game dev gangsters. Don't get in trouble to get in jail and you will not be able to watch these videos. I will see you in the next one.